Welcome to Numbers World. Today we are going to solve past papers of ICATS Mathematics Contest of year 2018 for grade 3 and 4. Question number 1. The graph below shows the number of canoes boats rented at a lake. According to the graph, about how many more canoes were rented in week 4 than in week 1? So the bar of week 1 is ending after 15. So the estimated number is 17 here. And the bar of week 4 is ending after 45. So the number is 47. As it is a question of comparison, so we are going to subtract the numbers. 47 minus 17 is equal to 30. So 30 more canoes were rented in week 4 than in week 1. That is our option A. Question number 2. Devon drew an angle as shown below. Sarah drew an angle that was twice the measure of Devon's angle. Which of these shows the measure of Sarah's angle? We can see one arm of the angle is at 0 and the other arm is at 40 or 140. But this is the shape of an acute angle. So we may say Devon's angle is an acute angle that is 40. And Sarah's angle is double of Devon's angle. So 40 plus 40 is equal to 80. That is our option C. Sarah's angle is 80 degrees. Question number 3. The table below shows the total number of servings of cereal in different numbers of boxes. According to the pattern in the table, what is the total number of servings of cereal in 9 boxes? So 10 boxes are given, but we need only 9. So we will plus 4, 3 and 2. The sum is equal to 9. Now we are going to add the total number of servings in these 9 boxes. So we will plus 32, 24 and 16. The total is equal to 72. So option D is the correct one. There are 72 servings of cereals in 9 boxes. Question number 4. The points labeled on the number line below represent decimal numbers. Which point represents a decimal greater than 0 0.45 but less than 0 0.55? So let's find out the missing numbers first. What is in the center of 0 0.4 and 0 0.6? It's 0 0.5. And in the center of 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, it's 0 0.7. So it's quite obvious in the center of 0 0.45 and 0 0.55 is point Q, which is 0 0.5. So option B is the correct option, point Q. Question number 5. Marco wants to save $75 to buy a tennis racket. If he saves $5 each week, how many weeks will it take Marco to save $75? So his targeted amount which he wants to save is $75 and he can save $5 in one week. So we will divide 75 by 5. The answer is 15. So he can save $75 in 15 weeks. That is our option C. Question number 6. The figures below follow a pattern. The pattern will continue in the same way. Which figure should come next? We can see there is a pentagon first, after that hexagon, uh, then a trapezoid and a triangle. So if the same pattern is repeated, then after hexagon, a trapezoid will come. So option B is the correct one. Question number 7. Quinlan described a number using these clues. The value of the digit 7 is 7 multiplied by 10. That is equal to 70. The value of the digit 3 is 3000. The value of the digit 1 is 100. Which number could fit Quinlan's description? So according to the given instruction, the number will be like this. 3 is at 1000 place. 1 is at 100th place. 7 is at 10th place. And unit place is missing. So out of all our options, only option A is matching with the uh, number because here 3, 1 and 7 are at the same places and as the unit space was missing, so we'll say 5 is that unit space. So option A is the correct one. Question number 8. Landry drew a flag with exactly one pair of perpendicular sides. Which of these could be the shape of the flag? Let's draw all the shapes first. Two lines are called perpendicular lines if they meet each other and make an angle of 90 degrees. If we look at our option C rectangle and D square, these two shapes have two pairs of perpendicular sides. But it's mentioned in the question, the flag has only one pair of perpendicular sides. So option C and D are incorrect. The option B, acute triangle is also wrong because there is no pair of perpendicular sides. There is no right angle in it. So option A is the correct one because in the right triangle, there is only one pair of perpendicular sides. So the shape of the flag is right triangle. 
Question number nine. Christine has a ten dollars bill to spend at a book fair. She buys one book for four point nine five dollars, two bookmarks for zero point six five dollars each, and a keychain for one point eight five dollars. How much change should Christine receive from her ten dollars bill? So the, to the total amount was ten dollars. The price of the book was four point nine five dollars, and the price of the bookmark was zero point six five. She bought two bookmarks, so we are going to write the numbers two times and. Uh, the price of the keychain is one point eight five dollars. We are going to add all the numbers. The total amount which she spent was eight point one dollars. Now we are going to subtract it out of the total to get the remaining amount. That is one point nine dollars. That is our option D. So, question number ten: A dictionary has a mass of about two point five kilograms. Which object has a mass closest to the mass of dictionary? If we look at our option A, bicycle, and option C, refrigerator, these two options are quite heavier than 2.5 kilograms. And option D, bag of chips, has less weight than 2.5 kilograms. So option B, the pair of boots, is the only appropriate option whose mass is closest to the mass of dictionary. Question number 11. The table shows the number of cartons of milk the school cafeteria sold each day last week. Which of these is the best estimate of the number of cartons of milk the cafeteria sold last week? To find out the best estimate, we are going to add all the number of cartons which were sold in the previous week from Monday to Friday. The total is 2002. So if we look at all our options, option C is the best estimate, which is 2000. That is the closest number to 2002 out of all the options. So option C is the correct one. Question number 12. There are six honeycomb cells around one cell. There are eight honeycomb cells around two cells. How many cells are around a row of three cells? So let's draw honeycomb cells around these three cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So, we can say that there are 10 honeycomb cells around 3 cells. Option D is the correct one. Question number 13. Find the sum of the two smallest numbers in a row. So, here we have to find out the two smallest numbers in each row and plus them. In row number 1, the two smallest numbers are 2 and 4 and their total is equal to 6. In row number 2, the two smallest numbers are 0 and 1. If we plus them, the total is equal to 1. Similarly, we will find out the two smallest numbers and plus them for rest of the rows as well. Now, if you look at all the sums, 1 is the only number which is present in the given options. And uh, secondly, it is smallest among all the sums. So, option B is the correct one. Question number 14. Picture shows a plan of square garden. The distance between apple trees is 5 meters. The distance between a tree and the fence around the garden is 5 meters. Find the area of the garden. So first of all, we are going to find out the area of one square. So the formula is length multiplied by width. The length is 5 meters and width is also 5 meters. So the area of one square is equal to 25 square meters. Now there are 16 such squares. So we will multiply the area of one square by 16, which is equal to 400 square meters. So option D is the correct one. The area of the garden is 400 square meters. Question number 15. Which two shapes could be placed together to form the rectangle? If we look at all our options, option D is the appropriate one because if we rotate one triangle and join it with the second one, it will make a rectangle. So option D is the correct one. Question number 16. Which shape appears most often in the figure? So we can see one star, then two circles, one, two, three rectangles, one, two, and three pentagons, and one, two, three, four triangles. So option D is the correct one. Triangle appears most often in the figure. Question number 17. Which numbers are inside the square and inside the circle but not inside the triangle at the same time? So according to the criteria, we need those numbers which are in the square and in the circle but not in the triangle so if we look at all the numbers four is only in the triangle and six is only in the circle so these two numbers are out of the list eight and five 
these two numbers are only in the square so we are going to skip them if we look at rest of the numbers 3 2 and 9 these three numbers are in square circle and triangle but according to the criteria we do not need those numbers which are in the triangle so we are uh, not going to consider these three numbers as well now we are left with only two numbers 7 and 1 7 and 1 are inside the circle and in the square as well so option d is the correct one question number 18 which of the shapes has the largest perimeter we know the perimeter is the length of the boundary of a shape so let's calculate the perimeter of the given shapes option c has straight lines so we can count the number of the sides uh, of its boundary so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 so exact perimeter of shape c is 18 and if we calculate the perimeter of shape D, it's so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So exact perimeter of shape D is 18. Now, as shape C and D had straight lines, so it was easier for us to calculate the perimeter of these two shapes. But scenario is different for A and B because these have slant lines. So if we count the number of the sides of the boundary of shape A, the estimated perimeter is 16. It is estimated because there are two slant lines. The, we know the length of the slant line is always more than the straight line. In shape C, this side is covering three squares. So we have counted three blocks over here. In option A, the side is, has also three squares, but the line is slant and due to longer length, we are going to say the perimeter of shape A is more than 16. But the value is unknown, so that's why we are making an estimated perimeter. Now look at the shape B. It is that in shape B, we have slant lines. If we count the number of the sides of the boundary of shape B, the total is equal to 18. But the perimeter of shape B is more than 18 not exact 18 due to the slant lines. As I told you, the length of the slant line is more than the straight line. So option two, in option C and D, we could find the exact measurements due to the straight lines, but in option A and B, we had to make uh, the estimates. So the perimeter of uh, shape A is more than 16 and perimeter of shape B is more than 18. So option D is the correct one. Option B has the largest perimeter. Question number 19, there are 8 buckets, 4 of them are filled with water. What is the smallest number of buckets that I can move to make the pattern? Full bucket, empty bucket, full bucket, empty bucket, etc. So, so as they have asked about the smallest number of buckets that we can move to make the pattern, we will uh, pour the water of the second bucket into the seventh bucket and the water of the fourth bucket will be poured into fifth bucket. So minimum we can take two moves to make the pattern. So option D is the correct one. Question number 20, John ate the piece of pizza and left the rest for his friends, Jim and Jack. The diagram shows the amount of pizza Jim and Jack equally shared. Who ate the smallest amount of the pizza? So here, if we divide the circle into four equal parts, John ate one piece out of four and left three by four for his friends, Jim and Jack. And Jim and Jack shared the remaining amount of the pizza into two equal parts. Each part is greater than 1 by 4. So obviously John ate the least amount of the pizza and Jim and Jack ate more than him. So option B is the correct one. Question number 21. Eric measures 10 leaves with a ruler. He records the lengths as shown. Lengths of the leaves are given in inches. Which line plot shows the lengths of the leaves recorded correctly? So we can start with the whole number. There are four sixes. So there should be four crosses at six. So in option A, there are only two crosses at six, which is wrong. In option B and C, there is only one cross at six. So these two options are also incorrect. In option D, there are four crosses at six. So that is the correct option. We can check the other numbers as well. We have three times five holes, one by two. So in option D, there are three times three crosses at five holes one by two so that can be the correct one now 
there are two crosses at six holes one by two so option d is the perfect cross question number 22 27 students want to join teams for relay races each team must have four students how many complete teams can be made would any students be left out if any option a is five complete teams with two students left out b is six complete teams with three students left out option c is seven complete teams with zero students left out and uh, the last option is eight complete teams with three students left out so, so it's a question of division we are going to divide 27 by 4 so let's write 27 inside the division house and 4 will be written outside. Now 4, what's our 27? 27 doesn't come in the table of 4. So we will see uh, a number that is closest to 27, but it comes in the table of 4. It's 24. 4, 6 are 24. And 27 minus 24 is equal to 3. In other words, we can say that 6 complete teams can be made of 4 students and three students will be left over it's kind of six remainder three so option b is the correct one six complete teams with three students left out question 23 beth was using meter sticks to measure a long table in her classroom she put the meter sticks end to end three times the third meter stick went over the edge of the table like this how long was her table so the third meter stick is shown in the picture it means she has uh, measured two complete meters already and the mark on the third meter stick is ending at 58. So option D is the correct one. The length of the table is two complete meters and 58 centimeters. Question number 24, Mary has a piano recital on May 25. Today is April 28. How long must she wait before the recital day? So today is 28th April. We can count the number of weeks and days before the recital day, which is on 25th May. 28, 29 and 30 can fill the spaces over here. So there is one week, two weeks, three complete weeks and one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's three weeks and six days she has to wait before the recital day. That is our option B. Question number 25, a drawing of a square checkerboard is shown. The length of each side of the checkerboard is 8 inches. All of the black and white squares are the same size. What is the perimeter of one of the black squares on the checkerboard? The length of the one side of the checkerboard is 8 inches and there are 8 squares in one row. So if we talk about this black uh, square, one side of the square is of 1 inch. So there are four such sides, so four ones are four. So the perimeter of the one black square is four inches. That is our option B. I hope you like my video, so don't forget to like and comment on it and subscribe my channel.